Hi, Bill. Hi, Liz. Hi. You've had a very long history with NTL since about 1984, and knowing what you know about the National Training Laboratory and its 65-year history, what do you think we should be focusing on in our discussions at our annual meeting that you think will help us move forward with clarity and with unity? Well, I have been uh, around NTL uh, for a long time, and I can remember how excited I was uh, driving up to Bethel, Maine from Cleveland for the first time. I was going to Mecca. I was going to be at the place where I had heard so much about where it all happened, and I had uh, a chance to spend a week in Bethel running the resource center, whatever that meant. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even doing a lab, but I was really excited just to be there and be close to the people who were doing a lab. And then when I got my first chance to do a lab, I got the notice through the mail. Back then there was mail, not email. And it said, you know, something about an H.I. J-O-G lab, and I knew MWCs, and there were all kinds of abbreviations, so I had to call headquarters and say, I get what a human interaction lab is, but I don't get this J-O-G part, and they said, it's jogging, stupid. You're supposed <laughs> to help people learn how to run, and I said, oh, and uh, so then I had to go out and find somebody who knew how to do that, and uh, it was very interesting, and I went on to uh, do a number of uh, senior labs with John Carter over the years. It was great mm -hmm. fun, really enjoyed the work that I did with NTL. And it's great to be back now in the capacity of editor of JABS and uh, helping to bring the research and the work that mm -hmm. people are doing in the field to uh, everyone's attention and, and having great people around uh, NTL who are also contributing to make that happen. So, so where I, I would like to see us focus is on improving uh, what we do as an organization uh, in making it easier for us uh, from a business perspective to be successful. I think there are some things that we can do. And what would you suggest? Well, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what we admire in great organizations mm -hmm. and kind of do a little comparison with where we are at NTL and this is just my humble opinion there are a lot of smart people around NTL and we've been talking about this topic ever since I first joined the organization and I've been to meetings where we've discussed it and lots of people have thought about it so I know there are rich and deep thoughts uh, that a lot of people are bringing to this meeting uh, that I wish I could attend uh, that, that will be interesting and that will take us in some new directions. So, so these are just some thoughts to kick things off. They'll be helpful. Good. So just, just to review for everybody's benefit in case they uh, don't have it right in front of them, what, what's our vision mm -hmm. as an organization? People empowered to create just and compassionate organizations and societies in an interdependent world. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what we're all about. Just and compassionate mm -hmm. organizations and societies in an interdependent world. And the mission that we have related to that is to apply advanced behavioral sciences in the service of social justice, oppression-free societies, and health, healthy individuals, groups, organizations in the world through fostering learning, contributing to scholarship, and partnering with other organizations. So that's what we say we're all about. It's a tall order. It, it is a tall order. Mm -hmm. And we have these wonderful values that we share, social justice, ethical use of power, creation and dissemination of new knowledge, diversity, continuous learning, colleagueship and service, organizational excellence and quality. So no problem living up to those. So we have a lot of things going for us. We, we have, a, we have uh, a, a vision that I think most of us can relate to and, and be proud of, a mission that is, is about making things better and values that uh, are, are rock solid in terms of where we're coming from in our work. And I think that's what keeps us together and keeps us mm -hmm. tied to the organization. Mm -hmm. So on the surface, when we think about other organizations that we really admire, you know, what is it uh, that we think about? We think about their great missions. We think about who their leaders are, and mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. they're very visible leaders like a Steve Jobs or uh, other, other leaders that we admire in, in the not-for-profit world like a Nelson Mandela in South Africa. Uh, we, we often think about the organization and the person as almost synonymous. Uh, we think about the organization having a rich and compelling story to tell about what it does. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we find it somehow captivating. We want to 
understand more about it, it, it in a positive way. It's an admirable captivation, not a negative <laughs> captivation. Uh, and, and we see the organization making positive contributions to the world. So that's, on the surface, the kinds of things that we admire. And then when we start to look beneath the hood, so to speak, and say what, what allows those organizations to be that great, we start to talk about their culture and their DNA and the talented people who work there and live there and contribute and the strong identification that they have with the organization and its mission and how distinctive and appropriate and effective and uh, competitive its products and services are. Uh, typically they have a, a superior business model for doing what they do and, and when it all is right it just kind of seems to fall in place. It, it's, it seems almost like it's easy for these organizations to be the best at what they do. Um, if you think about a, a Gore making uh, you know, very interesting organization, very interesting internal culture, and they don't have any trouble selling Gore-Tex to the world, you know, it just mm -hmm. is easy for them to make money and be successful. Um, or, you know, a, an Apple with its innovation, it seems it's easy for them to attract innovative people and get them inspired in the Apple mission and be a part of that endeavor. And there are many more that we could, we could list that people admire, but it seems as if in these organizations the system that they've developed is aligned internally and externally, internally in how we operate and the values that we live and work with each other and externally with the market in, in something that the market loves about mm -hmm, what that organization mm -hmm. does or provides as a service, which fits with our need for clarity and direction mm -hmm. that we're pursuing at this meeting. Um, so, so I'd like to talk about NTL a little bit in terms of where, where we stand on some of these dimensions and kind of what we have going for us and what some mm -hmm. of the challenges are as I see them. That'd be great. So around mission, you know, our mission is social justice. And I think that that's a great and honorable mission for us to have, but I, I believe that it's a little harder for the world to buy than selling iPhones. It's, it's a tougher sell to get people to understand our mission and to be accepting and supportive of it, although it sounds like the right thing. Um, social justice isn't quite as popular as it was in the 60s and the 70s. Um, so you're suggesting we uh, refocus? We might need to look at our mission and think about how to can make it more contemporary and mm -hmm. attractive. But this fits into the larger picture of the, is it all falling in place? And I don't want to criticize our mission because I love mm -hmm. it. But but the question is, are are we getting a traction out there with with our mission among the people that we want to impress? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think there are probably reasons why social justice is a little harder to sell right now, and it's the economy is mm -hmm. tough. Um, you know, the, the Occupy Wall Street movement uh, has, has helped us to understand we're all in the 99% that's being oppressed. It's not just uh, a few people. We're all feeling oppressed and depressed uh, to some extent. Uh, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's an age in the world where we're feeling like it's not an enlightened age. Mm -hmm. We're not mm -hmm. feeling as good about the world as a place and the people uh, and our relationships with each other as it uh, once was or could be. And I think all of that makes us feel like there's something missing. And you know, what can NTL contribute to make this a better world? And certainly social justice is a part of that, but how, how do we address uh, our role in, in improving things? So you're talking about our branding. Our branding, how our we, mission, how we what we stand for, how we identify, our, what our story is. And then what our structure is and how we right. can better align ourselves exactly. internally and externally. Right. Our, our story, you know, great organizations have rich and compelling stories that they can tell to the world. People understand what they're all about and they, they get, you know, the story behind the founder or the, mm -hmm. the organization's products or services. And we... We have a compelling story that we tell to each other about NTL mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and its beginning and its growth in Bethel and other places and you know it's the, the life work of Kurt Lewin expressed in mm -hmm. all the things that we've done since. Uh, but to the average person on the street, you know, who's Kurt Lewin and right. who cares? Doesn't mean anything to Doesn't them. mean anything and, and we live in an age, unfortunately, with media full of rock stars and mm -hmm. internet billionaires and um, 
we, we probably need to think about our compelling story for the modern age. What is it? And, and who can represent that story? Perhaps having uh, one of our alumni exactly. represent who's, who's <laughs> could, now could a be. rock star. Yes, if we have such a person out there. <laughs> um, you know, leaders um, do often uh, carry the, the, the weight of representing the brand in the world, and we have had great leaders at NTL and some perhaps not so great. They've all been good people, well intended. I think all of us are. Uh, but as you look at other organizations and you see what they've done uh, to try to increase their visibility in the world, uh, you know, Habitat and, and Humanity, when mm -hmm. you think about Habitat, mm -hmm. you think about Jimmy Carter, you know, out there right. pounding nails with There's other people. There's, There's a face. There's a face to the organization. And, and mm -hmm. for the Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, mm -hmm. it's Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. And he happened to be uh, a kid who grew up in a Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. environment mm -hmm. himself. And when he was tapped on the shoulder by the, the now uh, CEO of Boys and Girls Club, Roxanne Spillett, you know, he, he agreed to serve as the spokesman for that organization. And Roxanne can tell the story. She's very articulate, and we, we need to get her at one of our future meetings to tell us the story of what she did to transform the Boys and Girls Clubs, which was an organization that was almost out of existence. And uh, to, to really create interest in that organization, uh, leveraging Denzel and other people that she put together on an external board to, to really bring attention and funding and prominence to, to the work that they do. So you're suggesting we may have to go outside of NTL. It's just a thought about how can we find others to support. How can we tap people out there who love NTL yes. and can help us be more visible in the world as a part of what we do? It's mm -hmm. not certainly all that we do, but it's part of what we do. Where is, where is our external board that brings that kind of attention to mm -hmm. the organization? Mm -hmm. We have an internal board, mm -hmm. but who are the stars that we have gone through our programs and love us who might be willing to serve and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. help us to make the organization great going forward? And their, their mission, by the way, is also pretty compelling, uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs. It's to enable all young people, especially mm -hmm. those who need us most, mm -hmm to reach their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boy, you know, I can get behind helping yes. young people reach their potential. You know, it's a great thing. So, again, it's easy, it's, it's catchy, it's, it's, it brings a tear to the eye. It's, That's what know, we need to look at. We need to, to think about words that we could mm -hmm. use that would do the same. Uh, great talent, we have that, mm -hmm. we always have. Uh, we, we haven't always agreed with each other. <laughs> we haven't always been full-time committed to the organization. Some have been more committed than others. And most great organizations do have this informal core of people who really make the difference. And if you have that, uh, great things are possible. And if you don't or the core is not right, it's really hard to build it or question mm -hmm. it in most mm -hmm. organizations because it's one of those things that's informal. It's below mm -hmm. the surface. So, so who are the core of people who are going to take this up and move us forward? That's a question we ought to be asking ourselves as we move forward. And finally, the business model. I want to talk a little bit about that. That'll be good. Uh, because it's never been right. NTL has never been an organization where the money has been unlimited. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really our goal. We mm -hmm. didn't set out to make ourselves wealthy. But it's never just fallen in place that what we offer to the world, the world is beating down our door to get to. And therefore, we are free to do whatever we imagine mm -hmm. we want to do. And do it easy, easily and effortlessly. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's like we've always been scratching to keep doing what we know is important in the world, even if the world doesn't know it. And uh, these great organizations don't have to. Uh, work very hard in order to get people to find a path to their door because what they're doing is uh, of such obvious value and worth to people out there that um, they want it. Whether it's Gore-Tex or Microsoft or Starbucks, uh, they, they almost couldn't fail. Once they had the concept, it was like, you can run with that. And so do people don't even understand why it's success yeah. successful in some cases, but they just do it and it's easy. Do you think it's as if uh, we're doing what Herb Shepard said, uh, pushing rocks uphill? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we're pushing rocks uphill. And it's not that what we do at our core is wrong in any way. I'm not suggesting that. Mm -hmm. It's just that uh, we haven't found a way to present that to the world or other products or services to the world 
that would enable, enable our lives to be a lot easier as an organization and to, to make a budget something that we never have to worry about again. And again, I, I suspect that our alums are a part of the answer to this, but I don't know in what way. I'm just thinking that as a resource, we mm -hmm. haven't tapped mm -hmm. them as much as perhaps we could. We probably haven't followed them as closely as we should have. We don't know who the most inf influential of our alums from our programs are. But they're probably people who can help us think through this and understand what new products or services might be that we could bring to the world that would make everything fall in place. And we could feel good about the work that we're doing and not have to worry about the bottom line as we do now. So we need to reach out more. Well, we need to be creative about the business model. And I don't have the answer, not pretending I do, but um, the one that we have now has never worked for us as well as it needs to. So how might we refocus our business model? Well, um, again, I'm not a strategy expert, uh, but, but those people who understand strategy know that there are lots of ways that organizations mm -hmm. bring in money from the external environment. Um, foundation support, mm -hmm. uh, selling products versus consulting services mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. experiences that people have to come to us to receive. Uh, we live in an online world. I don't know what that means for us, but probably there are implications there. Uh, we have so many smart people who are a part of NTL. What is it that they know and do that we can somehow capture and leverage and make attractive to the world out there? Uh, it's, a, it's a matter of exploring the possibilities. And I know that okay. we, we talk about these mm -hmm. things. I know we have mm -hmm. conversations about it. But we're so enamored with our mission and our work, and we love mm -hmm. doing our labs that it's hard for us to imagine ever doing much that's totally something different. different than that. And I don't know what that would be, but it would have to be something that resonates with us as well as with the world out there. It, it wouldn't work if it didn't resonate with us. We wouldn't want to do it. So we have to find out what that is, and I think we need to be more open to exploring some of those possibilities, whatever they might be. We can start looking at uh, the passions of, <laughs> of the alumni yeah. and, 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 uh, and the, the members, members the going forward, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, so I also want to say some appreciative things about NTL. I don't want to end with a gap between where we are and where we want to be, although I think all of us would say there's, there is a gap that we want to try to make it a better mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. than it has been. But I, I want to acknowledge that um, there probably is no organization in the world with a more well-intended mission mm -hmm. than we have. Uh, we are in the world to do good, and we are there to help others do good. And no matter what organization you can think of, I don't think any organization is better in terms of its intention. And so that's on our side. Mm -hmm. we're, mm -hmm. we're the good guys. We're trying to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any organization in the world with more talented people if you talk about the mission that we have, do we have the right people to achieve our mission? Absolutely. For what we do, we are as good as it gets. And so with that, we should be able to build towards a wonderful future. And the third thing you have to say about us, uh, since it's been a struggle for as long as I've been a part of the organization, is that we never give up. Mm -mm. We never give up. At some level, I think we probably love the fact that we struggle with this. It just makes being part of NTL more fun and interesting. <laughs> we just have to struggle in order to make this an organization that all comes together and falls in place. It, it's part of our personal learning journey. We want challenges. We love challenges. Yes. So and if it were perfect and easy, we might not be as attracted to it. And we're, we love discovering differences among ourselves in terms of our views and ideas and approaches to doing everything. So it's, it's part of the fun of the journey of learning and being with each other. And if we can look at it as uh, something that is full of possibility for us, rather than as something that is contentious that we can't agree upon, and we can learn our way to the future and try things, with this group of people and this mission, I don't know how we could go wrong. So we should have a good meeting for three days and try to find creative solutions to I'm sure you will. our business problems. <laughs> With you there, Liz, it's got to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut that part. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Bill, very much for being good here. Good luck on the meeting, everybody. I hope it goes well. Thank you.
Take care.